Okay, um, so I think we're just going to get straight into it, Nessa. Are you, sure. are you all set? I am. I'm Fantastic. excited. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, so last week we were, um, we were talking about exploring insects through the sense of sound and hearing, and I believe you, you all got into singing that song, and I'm hoping that some of you might send in some recordings of your wonderful singing. Um, this week, we're exploring insects through the sense of taste. Um, but we will be revisiting some, some of the stuff that we did last week, because last week you all sent in wonderful poetic lines uh, for me to use to construct some poetry based on uh, your memories of hearing insects and what insects communicate to us and to each other. So, first of all, just a little reminder of who I am. I'm Nessa Darcy. And I am I'm a creative entomologist. It's going to make my slides full screen. And what that means is that I reintroduce humans to their natural habitat through colorful encounters with insects. And that includes insect surveys. So you can see here with my friend Oshin, we're doing an insect survey around Fibsborough in Dublin at the moment. And it involves um, finding and identifying insects, uh, bringing people out on walks and doing workshops in schools and webinars like this one, and also making art with a focus on flora and fauna. So that's a picture that one of my friends did in Madagascar um, when I was uh, painting with them. So I'm going to start with one of the poems that I put together based on your beautiful lines that you wrote last week. And uh, obviously crickets and grasshoppers came up a lot when we were talking about the sounds that insects make and their bows in the order Orthoptera. So I made a little pun there in the title, Orthoptera. And here's the poem. The cricket bounces as he dances, like an earthquake, scary green snake hidden in the grass. Hopping on hay in the heat of midday, like a hob turning on, just one second, then he's gone. Let's play hide and seek, creak, creak, creak. Don't run away, human, don't run away. We'll leave you alone if you'll just come and play. Bye, 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 I heard the cricket cry. I looked for him, I couldn't see, but his silence told me he'd seen me. Ooh, very good. So it's amazing, you're, you're all over the country, even around the world, we have people listening in and you all um, contributed lines to this and, and managed to create this beautiful poem. So we'll have more of those later on and uh, I'll read some more over the, the next couple of weeks as well because we have two more webinar, webinars to go after this one. So there was a question last week, what is the difference between a cricket and a grasshopper? And it turns out there's a lot of differences. So we knew that crickets, our uh, grasshoppers rub their legs and wings together to make sound. Crickets rub their wings together to make sound. But also grasshoppers have shorter antennae. Crickets have really long antennae. Grasshoppers have their ears on their abdomen. That's like their belly. And crickets have ears on their front legs. And um, grasshoppers are active mostly during the day and most crickets come out at dusk in the evening. Grasshoppers mostly eat grass. And crickets will eat lots of different things, including other insects, which brings us on to our topic of the day. What do insects eat? What do insects taste like? How do insects taste? We're going to be exploring uh, the theme of taste today. So let me just find my notes because I, as usual, want to tell you a lot about insects. I have a lot to share because there's just so much to learn about insects. So we're going to have a look at what they eat, what they taste like, and then if your teacher has had a chance to look at the resources and do a little bit of shopping, we're going to prepare and eat some insects. Now teachers, uh, don't worry if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, you're, I know you're all incredibly busy and doing an amazing amount of work all the time. So let's give our teachers a round of applause. So if you do, did manage to get your materials, and you still need to prepare them uh, for the kids. Um, I'll just let, I'll let you know, um, I'm going to put it in the chat box, what you need to, uh, to give each child. So where have I put that? Um, 
bear with me a moment. Okay, well, actually, maybe if um, if Eleanor has the notes that I sent, uh, you might put the what the teachers need to give to the kids. So it's in the it's in bold letters. It says each pupil needs. So if you could pop that in the chat box, that'd be really, really helpful. Yeah, I think I just managed to do that there. That's the toothpicks, the grapes, the blueberries. Is that right? Oh, yes. Uh, that should do. Yeah. So if you want to slice up your grapes um, and give each pupil about three slices of red grape, three slices of green grape, one blueberry, four, two, two to four thin slices of apple or pear, and three toothpicks. And um, that's what we'll be using at the towards the end of the webinar. So you still have time to prepare those. So over the past two webinars we have learned some ways that insects avoid getting eaten. So how can you remember, how do insects avoid getting eaten? How do they avoid getting tasted by other animals? Pop, the, pop your answers in the chat box there and we'll have a little chat about that. I have lost my chat box. Where is that? <laughs> Perhaps the Belner and Dean. Can you should see, see that down the bottom. But if anything comes through, we'll uh, we'll share it with you. Nothing's <laughs> come through just yet. Cool, thanks. Um, but I I think the teachers are probably asking the children. Here we go now. So yes. some of the colours say that they are toxic. Uh, yes. Camouflage, warning stripes, the ability to escape, fly away. They make a signal to let them know they don't taste good, or they change the colour of their bodies. Clicking noises. Stings. Have stingers, yeah. yeah that <laughs> definitely warn me off. Well remembered. It's a great list. Yeah, really good. Fantastic. So, um, and you'll remember that guy up in the top left is a hoverfly and he pretends to be a wasp. He pretends to be something that can sting. So there's really a lot of clever ways that they use to avoid getting eaten. And yeah, you remember the moth at the top of the page? That's the death's head hawk moth. He's been the star of the show so far during our webinars. And someone wrote a beautiful couple of lines about the death's head hawk moth last week. So here's another poem. He dodges the rain, screeching his way to his one true love. He's bearing a gift of stolen honey. So you'll remember that the death's head hawk moth has a taste for honey, which they steal from honeybee colonies. Um, so I'm wondering if you know, how do insects taste? Dean, Eleanor, any ideas? How do insects taste? I imagine they don't taste very nice. That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, yeah, I thought you meant eating insects. With okay, their, how do they, their mouth. How do they taste? Yeah. <laughs> but the do same they, as us do they have do they have like um taste buds tongue, right we have taste, taste buds do they have taste buds somewhere well they do have um chemical receptors on certain parts of their bodies so uh, you can see a moth here drinking uh drinking some sugar water with his proboscis so they have some taste buds on those and there's a, a butterfly up the top there um drinking salty mineral water from a stream. Grania here says, I uh, have to say this now, um, that uh, moss tastes through their feet. Yes, what? absolutely. That's no. just what I was about to say and you're absolutely correct. Um, moths and butterflies have chemical sensors in their feet so that they can, they can find out where there's nectar present for them to drink. And also so they can they can um, check if they're picking the right food plant to lay their eggs on. So each caterpillar has a different type of food plant that it needs to eat. And the moths and butterflies have to make sure that they lay their eggs on the right one. And so that's how they do it. They land and their feet uh, taste plant. So you mentioned a proboscis. That's kind of like a straw, is it? Yeah, that's right. It's a straw that, they, that the um, butterfly or moth <clears throat> excuse me, can roll up. So they, they kind of roll it up when they're not drinking and then extend it to, to get nectar um, out of the flowers because they're actually um, good pollinators as well, like our bees. And um, 
not only flowers and nectar, but they'll also, some of them drink honeydew, which is kind of like a sugary poo that the, that aphids produce. And some of them um, will actually drink the juices from decaying animal matter. So Ew. lovely. <laughs> so who likes the taste of insects? What, what kind of animals eat insects? Pop your answers in the chat box there. We've, we've got one comment come in about how, um, how insects taste already. So Wendy has said that wood lice taste like prawns because they're actually closely related. And then Mark Abbott has said that they taste chewy. <laughs> chewy. <laughs> and, and does he know that from experience? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> We also have a lot of answers coming in on who eats insects. So we have birds and spiders. Brilliant. And you're absolutely right. Woodlice are supposed to taste like prawns because they're crustaceans and they're related to prawns and shrimp and uh, lobsters and crabs. Not and from they... experience, Mark says. <laughs> Not from experience. Okay. You, you have a picture of a bat and they are really ferocious eaters of insects, aren't they? They are, they yeah. They can eat thousands in a night, is that right? Or certainly yeah, hundreds. I believe that's correct. And they also, if, they, if they've got like a, a big source of moths, for example, they'll just eat the body of the moth and leave the wings because the, the body is where most of the protein is and the wings are quite dusty, so they're probably difficult to, to actually eat, at least not without a glass of water. So they, not only bats, but that blue tit up there on the left, in the top left, um, blue tit chicks need now it's it's such an unfathomable number that I can't remember it uh, off the top of my head they need around 100 caterpillars every day while they're in the nest so and a blue tit nest can contain on average 10 chicks so that means that the blue tit parents need to find 1000 caterpillars every day to feed their brood um, if they're lucky both of the parents are are still contributing to the nest that so they haven't got eaten by something else um and so that's 500 caterpillars for these tiny birds to find every day and that's why it's really important that we that we let weeds grow and um, because or wildflowers as i like to call them because all moths and caterpillars as i was saying have different food plants and as as many different plants as you can have, the more caterpillars that you'll have for blue tits to eat, to feed to their chicks. So we also have, what else have we got there? And does anyone know what's going on in the bottom middle picture? That looks like a flying ant. It's related to an ant. It's Ooh. a type of wasp. Oh. So wasps, bees, ants, and sawflies are all in the order Hymenoptera. Can you guess what it's doing? Is he is he eating the caterpillar? Is that a caterpillar that he's trying to sting and then eat? He is doing something to a hoverfly larva. Yeah, so it's like the hoverfly version of a caterpillar. Oh, the wannabe. Gotcha. The wannabe, exactly. <laughs> and what he's doing is laying, or what she's doing, is laying her eggs in the larva. And oh. those eggs will hatch out into smaller larvae that will eat the hoverfly larva from the inside out. So okay. insects eat other insects and the hoverfly larva itself eats other insects. It eats aphids. So um, it's a really handy one to have in the garden to protect your okay. plants. Okay, we've got some really good ones coming up. I'm going to have to share this with you. And um, we've got people in China eat insects. In France, they eat snails. In Uganda, children eat ants. And some people eat roasted tarantula. Oh, and jelly worms. And jelly worms. <laughs> yeah. Wow, these are fantastic answers. It sounds like you've done all your research before the webinar and you're trying to steal my job from me. But <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's, um, that's a really nice uh, international overview of, of um, humans eating insects because it's extremely common, actually. And we're going to get into that in a second. Um, lizards there as well, like we were talking about earlier, they're also big fans of insects and spiders, of course, like to catch insects in their webs or sneak up on them and hunt them. So have you ever eaten an insect? Does anyone have first-hand experience of tasting insects? 
I do, but not intentionally. I was riding my bike really fast and a fly flew in my mouth and I ate it. Oh, no. And how did <laughs> it taste? There was nothing I could do to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find my chat box here. I really so, want to, be able to we see do what you guys have some, some more answers. Very similar stories to mine, in fact. Mm. So Katrina <laughs> ate a fly by mistake. Um, and Anne says the odd midge in the bog has definitely been eaten. <laughs> uh, yes. I think these people are walking around with their tongues hanging out. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, they're an excellent source of protein, so keep it up. So Linda oh. has some children in her class that have eaten crickets, woodlouse and flies. Amazing. Go and away. Karen has eaten snails. Oh. And a lot in fourth class with Mark ate flies by mistake too. So there's a lot of mistaken fly eaters out there. <laughs> Jelly worms and spiders only in sixth class with Megan. Uh, less less adventurous tastes, but delicious <laughs> nonetheless. So if even if you think actually, you know what, even the people who've had the jelly worms and spiders may have eaten insects without knowing it. Because and why are my slides moving along? Because some uh, food colorings are made of insects. So if you've had red jellies there's a chance that they've been, that the food coloring in them <clears throat> is called carmine. And that is made from a cochineal bug. So that's, um, it's a bug that lives on these um, prickly pear plants. And you can see the traps in the, in the top one there, the insects will go and hide in those. People can collect them and then make this natural red dye out of them. And we also, have on some on some sweets and things you'll have a glaze that makes them shiny and sometimes that is made from a substance called shellac which is this resin up in the top picture that's um exuded by the lac bug so they they'll move along the plant living inside this little tube that they make out of resin and that resin is what is used to make some jelly beans shiny not all of them but um sometimes so oh wow people really know their edible insect stuff so insect farming and processing produces significantly lower greenhouse gas emissions not only do insects produce less waste their excrement called frass is an excellent fertilizer and soil amender so yeah it's um there's a lot of research being put into how insects could be a more sustainable source of protein than meat, than uh, mammal meat. Um, and so insect eating in, the, in Ireland and in the rest of the Western world is becoming more, uh, more common. <laughs> and somebody somebody, somebody put gross, gross, but you know, if we're talking <laughs> about saving the planet, um, yeah, okay, I might be tempted. <laughs> Good. What do you reckon the word entomophagy means? Um, does it mean the eating of insects? It absolutely does. Yeah. And um, uh, let me check my notes. I was going, oh yeah, I was going to ask you, how did you react when you heard that some sweets contain substances made out of insects? But we've already got um, one reaction. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I think it's sneaky reaction, that they, supporting... yeah, it's, it's a sneaky way to get insects into people without realizing it. <laughs> It kind of makes thinking about eating insects a little less concerning because you feel like you've already eaten them in some yeah, ways. So we're used to it. Or more concerning. <laughs> <laughs> so it is actually, there are more countries in the world that where insect eating is normal part of everyday life than there are countries where it's not. So Ireland, generally, we're not used, we're not that used to eating insects. Uh, a lot of people might react with uh, the word gross. Um, but there are actually more places in the world that do eat insects. So it's not such a crazy idea. Um, but some, one way that people are starting to eat it over here is, um, is through like cricket flour, cricket protein bars and snacks. Fourth, fifth, sixth, one boy, St. Aidan's Cavan are horrifiedly enjoying this. We're glad to hear it. <laughs> so here are some examples of different types of mini beasts that are eaten around the world. Um, 
you does anyone know what they are and what countries they might be eating it? Dean mm. Elner, have you eaten any of these delicacies? Uh, no. Um, well, I'm looking at the prawns. The but... prawns, right? <laughs> so prawns They're are basically the in Ireland. <laughs> invertebrates of the sea, the mini beasts of the sea. Um, so yeah, that picture could easily have been taken mm -hmm. down the local pub in Ballyvaughan or somewhere. And uh, we have, oh yeah, so France, Thailand, Malaysia. So the mealworms and the crickets at the top, fried crickets, um, they're from Thailand. Although I'm sure they're, I know they're eaten in many other countries as well. Um, Australia, interesting. Bush Tucker Challenge. Pardon? <laughs> a, a Bush Tucker Challenge, yeah. Oh yeah, oh of course, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And those those big caterpillars there are Saturnid moth caterpillars. Those are from Angola, although I know they're they're also eaten in a lot of uh, other African countries. And I was surprised when I saw what they looked like because with those yellow and black stripes and the hairs and spikes, I would have thought those caterpillars were saying, "Don't eat me. I don't taste good." But maybe when you cook them, they taste different. And then we've got sea urchins at the bottom. Um, those were served up to us in a restaurant in Madagascar with their spines still wiggling. And the big snail at the bottom is a giant African land snail. Um, those, they, I used to keep them as pets. And their shells can grow to the size of your hand. And so they probably have a, a fair bit of meat in them. Um, and someone's saying India is also another country where people eat insects. So yeah, 115 countries out of uh, approximate, the approximately 195 countries in the world uh, will eat insects. So let's see what we've got coming up next. Oh yes, I'm excited to show you what's next. And someone's just pointed out that violins and cellos were traditionally varnished with shellac varnish made from the lac insect resin. That's, that's a lovely thing to know. I think um, I think often sweets now will will have beeswax on them instead of shellac. So it's still insects helping to make our sweets shiny. So here is Lake Malawi, which is between Malawi, Mozambique, and Tanzania. And can anyone guess what that big cloud over the lake could be? Oh yeah, shellac nails are made with the same shellac. That's right. Someone just asked her in the chat. So what I mean, do you think? To me, that looks like um, a fire on the horizon yeah. or, you know, a rain uh, forming clouds or water forming clouds or something like that. But it's dark. I was going to say a fire. Ash cloud. Well, yeah. yeah, it makes Good me one. think of smoke. Like. But you're going to tell us it's insects, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, Billions and billions of lake flies, um, which people in in the country surrounding the lake sometimes catch. Um, they'll they'll oil up a pan and swing it around through the cloud and collect midges and then mash them up to make nice little midge burgers. So, yeah, that's a really clever way to make use of a readily available source of protein. Um, in, in a very, that's available in a very natural way. Um, what, would you eat them? I'm really curious to try them. I, I think I'd give them a go. If they were in a burger bun with like lettuce and tomato and burger sauce, <laughs> yeah. like I don't think they look that different in that picture to regular burgers, so. True. I'm, I kind of imagine they taste like black olives, but I think I'm probably <laughs> very wrong. <laughs> And this is um, a creature that I saw in Madagascar, although I found it too cute to eat. Because look at its little fluffy bum. That's the, that's the baby of the lantern bug, the Madagascar lantern bug. Lantern bug. Um, and that fluff is kind of a sugary secretion that it makes to confuse predators. So the predator will, uh, like a bird, might go for the white fluffy part and the insect can escape. But these are supposed to taste like bacon. I might be tempted. <laughs> Go on your full Irish instead of the, the bacon. You just have some lantern bugs. <laughs> yeah. 
a lantern box, um, a lake fly burger. What else could you have? Well, let's find out what's on the menu in Ireland. So some of you have tasted some Irish insects before. Um, can anyone else guess what, uh, what other things, what insects or invertebrates might you be able to find out in the wilds of Ireland that you could forage and eat? Worms. Oh, I didn't come across worms in my research. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we have midges from um, Michelle or wood lice. Mm -hmm. But Dean, if you want to try worms, or let uh, us know how uh, they taste. Report, report back uh, and let well, us know I, how they go. <laughs> I think this is, you know, your survival thing. You know, you take the middle out of the worm and then what you're left with is something that could be fried. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. We also I'm not going to try suggestions it. <laughs> of, but we've got suggestions coming in the chat of crickets, slugs Eeks, and snails and earwigs. And dragonflies. Oh. Dragonflies and grasshoppers. Well, I didn't come across, when I was doing a little, a little bit of research, I didn't come across all of those um, as edible in Ireland. Um, I wouldn't risk them. If you I don't know for sure. Unless, yeah, <laughs> unless you've got some really sort of expert advice on what's edible. But the things that um, I did come up, oh, I definitely wouldn't need a devil's horse coachman. Has anyone done that before? A devil's um, coachman? They look terrifying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a reason that they have the word devil in their name. <laughs> um, but if anyone's tasted one, do let us know what that was like. Um, wood lice, as someone mentioned earlier, uh, related to prawns. Um, they are the, the shrimp of the land. Um, and they also, again, I'm not sure if I could eat them because they're just too cute. I think I was talking a week or two ago about all the different names that wood lice have. So this is this is obviously a map of uh, of Britain, but they have um, just so many crazy names, and I'm sure in Ireland they also have crazy names. So we've got Woody Wigs, Granny Greys, Chuggy Pigs, Billy Buttons, Monkey Peas, Sow Bugs, Pishamares, Tick Tocks, and Slavey Beetles. Um, and I don't think I'm not sure if I could eat something that had so many adorable names, but apparently they taste good. And I've included in your teacher's resource, there is a link to a page about cooking wood lice and there's a video on that about how to cook them. Snails. Our common garden snails uh, are related to the edible snails that you get in France. And they just need to be kept for a few days and fed lettuce and vegetables so that they, they clean out their guts because uh, they can actually carry rat lung worm, which does not sound like something that you want to catch. Um, but if they're clean and well cooked, apparently they are a delicacy. And believe it or not, bees are edible. So specifically the um, honey, the brood comb. So that's the comb in the colony where the larvae of the bees live. Now, generally in this country, we don't like to kill bees. Um, and that's entirely understandable because they, <laughs> they need to be looked after. There are pollinators um, there, uh, but it's common in some countries to eat grilled brood comb. And actually you can eat bee larvae uh, uncooked as well. And I've tasted them in Madagascar actually kind of by accident because I was eating some honeycomb, um, but they taste uh, kind of like uh, fatty honey, if you can imagine that. A little bit bitter, but they taste very good with the honey. <laughs> so yeah, we want to save the bees, not eat them. It's true, but um, they are edible, just so you know, in case I, you I, ever need to. <laughs> I looked up and the dragonflies you can eat. Really? And the worms you can eat. Oh, wow. And the earwigs you can eat. I didn't uh, do enough research. Grubs really. you can eat. There's a whole load of things we uh, could be having we on could our... eat if we got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we wanted to make interesting burgers for the next party that we have. <laughs> <laughs> which ones? Which ones taste best? That's what we need you to find out for next week. Well, we? we have two people in fourth class with Mark that say wood lice look delicious. So there are <laughs> a few testers out there for next week that will tell us what they think. Fantastic. 
Now, so today actually we are going to eat some bees. Um, <clears throat> and I've asked you teachers to prepare some materials for preparing these bees to eat. And we're going to show you now how that's done. So um, you should all have some, hold on, I'm going to stop sharing this for a second. You should all have some sliced grapes. So some black or red and some green or yellow. And you should have, and if you don't have these things yet, don't worry, you can make them in your own time. You and just watch the tutorial today. You should have some slices of apple or pear. And we have some blueberries. I also have a couple of raspberries in just for fun because they came with my blueberries, but it wasn't on your list. So don't worry if you don't have those. Now, what do you think all of these fruits have in common? Why do you think I chose these fruits to prepare our bees? I think I think that they may be pollinated by bees. Is that is that their connection? You are absolutely correct. These are all pollinated by bees or other insects, um, such as hoverflies, moths, butterflies, wasps. And the did you know that the best? Um, what am I trying to say? The uh, the more different types of insects pollinate fruit, the better the fruit. So the fruit develops better, it tastes better. Um, so it's a really good idea to conserve all of our pollinating insects. Um, and they'll make some really fantastic fruit for us to eat. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to turn these into a bee. So I was only joking, we're not going to eat real bees today, don't worry. Um, but you're going to need, oh, you're also going to need um, some toothpicks. So two or three toothpicks should be plenty for making your bee. And we're going to start off by assembling our sliced grapes. Now, bees are, of course, usually stripy. So arrange your different colored grapes in a stripy formation. as if you were preparing to make a, a necklace or a kebab out of sliced grapes. So you're gonna start off by arranging those like this. Mm, very good. <clears throat> and then you're going to skewer them. How can I show you this at the same time as skewering? You're gonna stick your toothpick through the slices of grapes. Now I'll, I'll show you a couple of these. So don't worry if I'm if I'm going too fast or if I am going too fast. Let me know. And I'll slow down. So here's what we've got to start off with. That's our bee body. Now these are pretty basic, rudimentary bees because, as we all know, normally a bee would have a thorax and an abdomen, but today we're just going for a sort of ovaly shape. Now your bee is going to need a head, and that's why we have blueberries. So skewer that blueberry on, like a little, like a little bee head. It's already now looking beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dean. Sorry. <laughs> and it, it also has a little stinger at the end. Oops, and at the start, at the front. <laughs> um, and then you're going to get your two wings. Now there's a few different ways you can arrange these and I'm going to show you some photographs in a moment of what it will end up looking like. Um, you can get creative with it and arrange them however you like. But I've chosen two slices of pear and I'm going to put them on either side of my bee. Now again, normally bees will have four wings, not two, but it's, it's, as I discovered during the two times that I practiced this, it's not that easy to attach pear slices to a bee made of grapes. So we're just going to 
um, go for a, a more basic design with two wings. So you can put your toothpick through the, the side of the slice. Oops, no I can't. This is one technique anyway. And then pop it through the side of your bee. And out the other side. And then you're going to do the same with your other wing. Now, it's easier to do this when you have it flat on the table or on a plate. Mm. But <laughs> you get the general oh. idea. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna try with another wing. I have to say that looks really very smart <clears throat> and Yay. tasty. Yes. Oh yeah, the best <laughs> thing about Excellent. these bees is they're gonna be delicious on your break on your lunch break. So the first time I learned to make these bees was um, was when I was sick, and uh, and it is one of the best activities you can do when you're sick because it's it's creative, it's amusing, um, and then you get to eat lots of fruit, which is really good for you when you're sick, full of vitamins. So there's our first bee. Now I'm going to show you a few um, a few different designs of bee that I've made with my friends um, on the next slide. And you can gain some inspiration from those. I've now got pear juice all over my laptop. Oh, so here's cool. where I got the idea. This is from fantastic. this great website. Do you know, Nessa, we had some pictures sent in before of the um, bee. Maybe we could encourage some of the students to do the same again with these. That'd be fantastic Absolutely. to see. So on the next slide, I've got uh, all the details you need to send in your, your bee photographs. So as you're making them, send them in to us and Eleanor will start, will show some of them at the end of the webinar. So the first time I made them, I had a, a much more elaborate collection of different types of fruits. So some of these are quite extravagant looking. Um, so maybe you can try those out in your own time. And then yesterday I had another practice um, and came up with these. So yeah, this is another another way you can do it is to to fit your wings in between the sections of grape. Um, and you might make a bombus, a lapidarius, a red-tailed bumblebee, if you have a raspberry to stick on the end. So have a have a play around with your with your materials. See down at the bottom here we've got one made of full grapes. Um, play around with those and send us in what you've got. And in the meantime, I'm going to make another one. Um, this time I'm going to use full grapes in case anyone hasn't had time to chop their grapes yet. So we can have, uh, I hope you can still see my video there. We have a big abdomen, a smaller thorax and then the head. Now we featured some of the artwork from the first webinar in our newsletter and on our website. So we'd be really happy to do that again if we get some fantastic images um, from the youngsters of their various insects, then we can share that with the world on the World Wide Web. And we do have the world watching, uh, listening in and, and watching and looking at the newsletter, don't we? We have some uh, viewers from America and hopefully beyond as well. So here's how my next bee is going. And whilst you're doing that, Ness, can we just ask you a question? Hopefully it won't sure. ruin your concentration. There was a question <laughs> from Miss um, Maguire and it's, are there any predatory non-native bees that threaten our indigenous species? Ooh. In Ireland, there, any predatory non-native insects? There are no, oh, insects or bees? Or non-native bees, it said, yeah, but. There are, as far as I'm aware, there are no predatory bees. Um, 
there is some concern and I don't know enough about it to say whether whether it's the case or not um, but there's some concern that maybe with the focus on honeybees that um, and providing what honeybees need that that might be uh, out they might sort of be out competing other wild bees like solitary bees in um, in some places but there's nothing that's kind of actively attacking uh, any of our bees so it's just a, it's just a matter of like making sure that all the solitary bees also have habitat and all the, the plants that they need as well does that answer your question yeah an, a new type of bee um <clears throat> what are you naming this new type of bee oh um bombus biospherus oh i like it named after the <laughs> two biospheres in ireland yeah absolutely An excellent name <laughs> but secretly both of you were hoping that i'd put your names in it no. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, are there any photographs coming in? Um, we have some starting to come through now. So I'm just trying to get my computer to connect to my WhatsApp so that I can start showing you all. Cool. Oh yeah, someone's made a great point that humans are the main predator when spraying roadsides with weed killers or over tidying our gardens. That's um, sadly, that's, those are some of the the main causes why bees might might not be doing so well um so just keep keep all those lovely wildflowers growing oh yeah and while you're working on your bees i'm going to read another poem that um i made up from the beautiful lines that you gave me last week if i can see it behind all these chat boxes and things oh wow cool yeah it's a uh, lovely one so this is called the humble bee reads my granny's apple tree <clears throat> in the warm summer sky the hungry humble bee buzzed by relaxing by the lavender i heard her drink from the flowers lots of bees buzzing the sound of summer coming reminder of sweet ice cream and sunny days look at what i can see very busy bumblebees. Bees buzz yellow and black. Bees fly forward and back, flying off the ground, flying all around. Bees the size of peas, bees with little knees. Oh honeybee, oh honeybee, come to me, oh honeybee. The humble bee meets the apple tree, buzzes on as a flower drops. I make a new friend and she makes a new crop. On her way back to the hive, she gave me a high five. Buzz, I want to be a bee. Buzz, just joking, I like me. <laughs> I really enjoyed putting these together. You guys are amazing writers. So all these lines came from the, the young people creating their own little bits of poetry about insects there last week. Yeah. Oh. This is a real cross-country, cross-planet uh, poetry writing uh, That's amazing. success. <laughs> yeah. And there'll be more, if you haven't heard your, your, the lines you contributed yet, there'll be more poems coming over the next couple of weeks. Oops. I think everyone is enjoying making their bees so much, they're taking their time. I have a few photos come yeah. in that I can share if you- Yeah, go for it. Ready, I'll try and figure out how I can get them open. I've lost the folder. Oh no. I'm going to start eating my bees. Oh, <laughs> I wish I'd made some bees now. That would be a nice <laughs> 11s break. Uh, here we go. Yeah, well, I suspect some people are heading off on their um, breaks um, mm. and probably eating their freshly made bees. So hopefully you can get some pictures of them and send them to us. It doesn't have to be straight away. Um, we'll yeah, take use them your time. at a later, later date. And even make them during the week and send them on to us because we'd love to use them. Oh, wow. Okay. So can we see those bees? So these came in um, from the Reach class, which is fantastic. Can you a make them big? Full of bees. And then we have some. 
there is a whole class full of bees then as well. Um, oh, there's more come just just popped in from the reach <laughs> class too. <laughs> It'll take me a minute to download them. Um, so there are some amazing shapes here. A lovely swarm. I love the stripes and how everyone has used different configurations of stripes I as well. Really so there's like lots it. of different bee species happening, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Does anyone have, has anyone made up um, a new name for their new bees? From Baron Carol in Mayo, sorry. Thank you very much for saying oh, that. fantastic. <laughs> so I'm going to stop sharing and see if I can get the other picture that just arrived as well. Oh, there you go. Um, there's a group already eating their bees. Oh, great. Hopefully they're tasty. They look tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to eat my um, snake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eleanor. Sorry. <laughs> the jelly snakes. <laughs> well, um, perhaps. Oh no, here we are. Here's the. Oh, look at those! Oh, that was a clever way to do the wings. Oh yeah. I love how creative oh. you're all being. And there's look. Somebody even had marshmallows as well to put on the stinger mm, and some dried well cranberry. Prepared. That's an interesting head shape in the bee, isn't it? I think that's a really good idea. Is it is it possible to zoom in on them? Is that Can working? Click on each individual image. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I'm sharing. Let me see if I can open that up differently so I can just share it directly because cool. it's sharing. It's sharing full screen for me, but clearly you're not seeing it full screen <laughs> yet. So how's that? Is that better? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Super. Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh, what's on the top of its head? That looks it's dried cranberry. Cranberry. Oh, Maybe that's the queen bee. Cool. They're beautiful, aren't they? So creative. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Superb. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh my word. They're so they look so oh, colourful. What is it? Wow. Nice. That's a That's weird like a looking inside. I like that. <laughs> yes. That looks like um, a prey mantis or something. I definitely want to know what the name of that species is. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Definitely try <laughs> cranberry funny. there. That's cool. Look at that. Oh, my word. You guys are superb. So creative. Fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, the big prey mantis is my favorite because it looks the best. funky. Yeah, okay. really good. But they're all great. Amazing. <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep the photos coming in and we can share some more next week. And in the meantime, I'm going to share some Malagash proverbs with you. So these are from Madagascar, where I remember I showed you the bacon bugs earlier, and they also like to eat grasshoppers and locusts. So this one, particularly at the at the top, I want you to think to think about whether we have um, any sayings in Ireland that might be similar to this one. Now, I did ask my Malagash friend what they mean, but he wasn't able to tell me. So I'm <laughs> I'm questioning whether they're actually from Madagascar. I did find them on the internet, but here's the first one: If the hill is on fire, the grasshoppers are roasted. Any thoughts on what that might mean? That's a tough one. I it's not all bad because, you know, <laughs> they're ready to eat. <laughs> I mean, yeah. got to look for the silver lining in the cloud. Silver lining. Or it could yeah. be something about, like, like stating the obvious, you know, the hill's on fire, the grasshoppers are roasted. True. Or even in disaster, at least we have snacks. <laughs> snacks are important. <laughs> you can catch As a cricket in your hand. But his song is all over the field. I think that's beautiful. For me, this is a bit like, I mean, I have fruit trees and I'm always happy to leave um, some of the fruit, if not all of the fruit, to uh, the birds because I like hearing their song. So it's mm -hmm. a fair exchange for me. Yeah, they can have my fruit as long as I can hear their song. Nice. Do you ever catch them in your hand, though? Uh, no. Good. But one in the hand <laughs> is worth two in the bush. <laughs> True. And probably the same for crickets. 
I think it's like, um, it's kind of like you've lost, you've lost this battle, but the, the fight isn't over. Like, um, yeah. you can kind of, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough though, because it is like, like you can catch a cricket in your hand, but his song is all over the field. So, you know, even though you've caught the cricket, you haven't really like taken away everything he's contributed, you know, with like his ideas, his song is still out there. So. Mm, lovely. Very deep. Very deep. Okay. Very, for a very deep for a Tuesday morning. <laughs> <And a third laughs> one. one can't give a grasshopper to a child if one hasn't caught it yet. So this is all about um, you need to work and earn your grasshopper in order to pass that on to your offspring. To your children. Mm, if you're so into you've grasshoppers. To, you've, got to, you've got to earn before you can pass it on. So you've got to work. Or maybe you shouldn't give advice unless you have like the experience and the knowledge yourself. Good, I like that, yeah. Um, obviously we've got some fantastic teachers here who've got vast knowledge and are passing that on to their young children, so absolutely brilliant. Indeed. There's one from Wendy come in here, ne nearly never won the race because nearly never ran. <laughs> uh, so you've got to take part in the race to stand a chance of winning it. Mm. And it's the taking part that's important. Okay. Yeah. Like and then the, the, the last one is a lovely message for us to, to end with as we eat our bees. Whatever food we have, we'll share it, even if it's only one locust or one fruit bee. Excellent. Because there may have been some bee constructing disasters uh, <laughs> as it's such a fiddly practice. And as we were saying earlier in the series, um, everyone has different gifts and skills. So each of these webinars will will probably appeal to different people. Um, so if anyone didn't manage to make a fruit bee, maybe the other people in your class would be willing to share theirs with you. Very good. I really like those problems. Thank you for sharing them, Nessa. My pleasure. So um, if anyone has any questions, because uh, we're nearly at wrapping up time, is that right? Yeah, it's flown by. So if there are any questions, Quite we'll intended. take them now. What's next week's webinar on Nessa? That's my question. Ooh, what are we one. exploring next week? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've been so wrapped up in what insects <laughs> taste like. I'm not sure what sense we're I'll try. Uh, I'll try and find my week. list. I'm sure you sent, you sent me a list of them. <laughs> I should know what's happening next week. We are exploring insects. Da, 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 drum roll, please. Through smell. smell. Ooh, mm. yes. lovely. And smell then the last one is touch. Great. So and there's um, well, join us. a couple of things that you might like to get, uh, a few resources that you might need to get for next week as well. So have a look at your teacher's resources. And Do we'll so you can fun. find those teacher's resources. They are on the carrybiosphere.ie website. Go to the resources page on that and you can download them there. They are also linked in the email that you get. So when you register for next week's session, you'll get an email to say con confirming that you've registered. And there should be a link towards the bottom of that email that will take you to the resources page too. So you can find it there and download it. So you'll have everything ready for next week. Okay. So we have a question. <clears throat> Do woodlice have pouches? Pouches like a kangaroo? I'm wondering, yeah. Maybe. Not that I'm aware of. Is that is that perhaps based on something that you've seen on their bellies? Because well, I know they they've do... got lots of legs underneath and they roll up into a ball, but I've not seen any pouches. Do you know how many legs? Uh more than eight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> 14 um, legs 14 legs oh, okay 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 but they do have um they have their lungs on their bellies and they look like little white um they could look like little white pouches so that might be what you're seeing fantastic um, yeah. so before we finish up i just want to um put it out there that we've got a couple of competitions going on we have a 2023 calendar competition where we're looking for artwork um, to go in our calendar and it's basically um, showing off the biosphere 
Um, so from a nature perspective, from a culture perspective, from a people's perspective, so people are using it. So if anyone wants to enter that competition, they can by emailing their images to info at Dublin Bay Biosphere .ie, and there's some great prizes, including 50 year one for all vouchers. And we've also got a writing competition where we're looking for your blogs, your writing blogs, no more than 500 words um, about nature. And I think, Eleanor, you're running that competition as well. Yes, yes, we'll be holding that over the summer. So do check out, it'll be on the website soon. Um, so you can check out and send in your nature blogs, which would be really cool. Um, I also want to mention that this week is Biodiversity Week. So there is a whole host of activities happening all over the country that you can get engaged with and explore your local areas and learn a little bit more about nature. So it's definitely worth checking out. If you check out the website Biodiversity Week, um, you should be able to find stuff online for your local area. I know here in Kerry, we have a whole host of things happening. And next Saturday, we're going to be working with one of our local farmers doing a bio blitz on his farm and trying to identify as many different plants and animals and insects on his farm. So that'll be really exciting. Ooh. So hopefully by next week, I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about the kind of things that we found there too. Yeah. And Nessa, I'll let you know if we find any really interesting insects. <laughs> Do please. So Miss Code has got a question. Are all insects edible? I think we answered that near the beginning when we were looking at um warning signs but are they all edible or i would say probably not no no some of Especially them would be toxic. Warning signs. um and um by all accounts uh, woodlice do have pouches uh based on a couple of insect books but goodness knows oh. what those pouches are for oh definitely not kangaroos or <laughs> i know that some cockroaches like the hissing cockroach has can kind of like hold its babies in a pouch and they kind of emerge instead of laying eggs they'll emerge as tiny baby cockroaches so maybe it's something like that it's maybe. something new for me thank you okay so um before we wrap up just a reminder that this is going to well it has been recorded and will appear on the Kerry and Dublin Bay Biosphere's YouTube channels um so people can watch it back over um and um get creative with their fruit bees Woohoo! fantastic thank you so much nessa yeah. really appreciate thank you. it and thanks, thanks everyone, everyone for joining in we'll see you again next week bye 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 bye, -bye.